Hi guys, Ben here and welcome to our very exciting SFM Reborn tutorial. In this video, my friend Nox and I will do our best to explain you the importance of a good lighting in scenes, as well as to go through each and every light option that is currently available. So, I was playing some Ark Survival the other day. I was getting ready to tame my very first T-Rex. Made a rifle and some sleeping darts. My girlfriend was supposed to be the bait since, you know, she was buffing up her HP and movement speed pool. So there we were, following the river into her mainland, trying to find something. We almost gave up after not finding anything for 10 or 15 minutes or so. Never mind. We will just go back to our camp, get some birds and scout from the air. Then an earthquake started. And Jesus Christ, the whole screen was shaking. What the hell was happening, right? Well, a huge ass T-Rex was coming my way, so I had time to shoot only once. I turn around, look up to shoot him in the head, and BAM! The sun and the light fills my whole screen. I went blind and started to panic. What the hell, I would just shoot. It's a Rex after all, I can't miss. Sure. So, the next thing I know, I shot my girlfriend right in the leg. She went from a race car to a sleeping beauty within a second. Of course, I used this time window to run away like a little bitch, as long as I lived, you know. I hope she won't watch this video, because she still thinks that some 150 level scorpion paralyzed her there. So yeah, Nox, what's the point of this story, aside from the fact that you suck at shooting? I will name some. And these are light intensity, ambient occlusion, shadow filter size, ambient intensity, and many others. If done right, like in my case, you won't notice a dark green Rex hiding in the dark green jungle until it's too late. The fact that Studio Wildcard made a realistic lighting effect, if you play on higher video settings at least, almost resulted in me sleeping on my couch that day. Getting good lighting options is that important. If you need visual proof, take a look at the following rendering reel. We have a simple fishing village scene, some buildings here and there, some trees in the background and nothing else. Based on our background, we have to mimic the set lighting to correspond with the shadows, light color and many other options we see. Shadows on those mountains are rather dark and it's obvious that the light shines from the right side. We can also determine that the global time on the background is a few hours away from the sunset, has a yellowish tint, some fog, eh, rather low ambient intensity and so on. SFM Reborn is so powerful that within just 15 to 20 minutes, you can match the lights of your set with the lights of the background picture, making your viewer think that they are both part of the same world. So, the next thing we want to do is to go over each and every single option that we have and briefly explain what they do. There is so much more to it that what I'm about to say, since I don't want to go too deep, explaining tons of information like this won't do any favors for either of us. And might even be a double-edged sword, since I don't want to scare you away. Right then, to start, let's load a simple scene and create a camera and light. Click on the newly created light to check out the available options. We have some pretty self-explanatory settings like intensity and max distance, but some of these options will take some time until I explain them. So the intensity is just that, the intensity, the power output of our light source. Drag to the left to lower the intensity and to the right to increase it. If you need more room to work with, say you want to create a really intense light that follows the detonation of an atomic bomb, right click on the intensity and click on remap slider range. This will give you an option to go above the default maximum value, and you can right click on many options to change their default values. The next option we have is the ambient intensity of our light. To see what this option does, first thing we need to do is decrease the overall map light value. Click on our camera and decrease the map light scale down to about 25%. This will tone down the global light and will give us a chance to work with shadows. Now, go back to our light and position so it shines on our character from the right side. A nice trick you can do is to drag your light to the secondary viewport to move it in the same way you would move the camera. Now, notice how the right side of our character is brighter than its left side? Makes sense, since our light source is on its right side. However, what if we want to make his left side darker? It also makes sense to do that, since our light is not actually reaching its left side. Our scene is a blank open space, so light has nowhere to bounce from. Back to our character's left side. To do so, 
drag the ambient intensity almost fully to the left side. Now, the parts that you are not directly shining on from our light source are now almost black. You would do the opposite thing if your character had some kind of semi-reflective material on its left side, like a smooth stone wall, for instance. Even though our light source is not directly affecting its left side, light particles will bounce off of the wall and create some ambient intensity. This is very similar to ambient occlusion you see in the video settings of popular games. Let's move on to horizontal and vertical field of view options. These are also very easy to explain and understand. First, let's point our light source to that wall. You will see a nice and round shined area. When you use those two options, you are basically just increasing or decreasing the affected area of your light source. If you're trying to make a narrow light source from your laser, you'll want to lower down both of these options as much as you can. However, if you're trying to light a bigger area, say from your campfire, you will probably have to increase those values, since SFM Reborn does not support omnidirectional lights, at least not at the time of creating this tutorial. Ok, let's move on. Spot falloff option sharpens or feathers the edges of our areas shined by your light source. Pretty straightforward, but some light sources will have sharper edges, especially if they are artificial light sources, but natural lights tend to have a slightly softer edge. The roundness option affects the shape of your light source. By default, it's set to be completely round, but if you move the slider to the left side, our source will slowly change to have a squared shape. The shadow filter size will affect the edge of your shadows. To see what I am talking about, first thing I need to do is position my camera closer to our character and lower down the previously mentioned ambient intensity. Notice what happens to the shadow edges when I play with the shadow filter size slider. Usually, light sources that are close to the objects will cast a rather sharp edged shadows, while sources that are far should cast a softer edge. This is not a set in stone rule though. So play with this setting until you find a look that suits your needs. Max distance changes the distance affected by your light source. This is usually the go-to option when you're trying to make a global light source. First, you move your light source as far as you can, increase its horizontal and vertical field of view, increase its intensity, and then increase the maximum distance to be sure that the whole area is affected. The following two options, shadow near and far, are easily explained if we enable the light frustum. Give me a moment until I find a good camera perspective. Now, if I move the shadow near slider to the right side, you can notice a white box that looks like a pyramid with a chopped off top. So anything within that box will cast its shadow, anything outside of it won't. Simple as that. The next three options are slightly complicated to explain, but I will do my best. We have constant, linear, and quadratic attenuation. These are the functions, variables affected by two values, distance and intensity. Let's bring up this picture to explain our constant attenuation. Let's take a moment to analyze what's in front of us. On our X line, we have the distance value, and on our Y line, we have its intensity. Constant attenuation means that as we increase the distance of our light spread, its intensity will stay the same. It will be constant. Make sense? If not, let's go back to our lovely map to demonstrate one thing. By default, SFM Reborn lights use quadratic spread, so we have to turn that off before we do anything. I will now play with the constant attenuation slider. Do you see how the intensity is uniform across the whole spread? The constant attenuation is great for global lighting due to its uniform spread. Linear attenuation spread looks like this. Its intensity is slowly lowering down across its spread. If we go back to our map and play with it, you can see that the area closer to our light source is slightly brighter than the area in distance. Quadratic attenuation is a default light spread and works best if you wish to light up smaller scenes, something like your typical room space. Shadow depth bias is really great when it comes to making your shadows looking more realistic. It really comes in handy when you're making lights for your nature scenes that are filled with plants, grass and tons of other gizmos which spread millions of shadows. To show you the basics of this option, let's place our light source right on top of that wall there. This wall has a certain level of tessellation, meaning that its surface is not completely flat. Certain bricks in the wall stick out more than others, meaning that we'll get deep shadows behind such bricks. So obviously, 
If we increase the shadow depth by a slider, we get more depth to these shadows. The Shadow Slope Scale Depth Bias is rather similar to the previous option and affects the strength of the Shadow Depth Bias. This is not entirely what this option does, but let's leave it on that for the sake of keeping things as simple as possible. Now, the Radius is a very exciting option, but before I tell you what it does, let's go over one thing. Most of the real-life lights do not spread a uniform shadow, especially if the light source is close to the object that is casting the shadow. If the mentioned object is tall, like our Sven here, and is vertically placed related to the plane where our shadow should be casted, like our ground, then the shadow near his feet should be sharper than the shadow of his torso and the head. If we increase the radius slider, we get exactly that. Okay. I said our last option was exciting, but our next one, called Volumetric Intensity, is really, really amazing. And as you can see, it does exactly nothing. Great, so what are we doing wrong? If we want to do anything with this slider, we have to right-click our light and enable Volumetrics. Now, we have a light source that's actually emitting some kind of a fog, which is affected by most of the sliders above. Play with the default and Volumetric Intensity to increase and decrease its strength horizontal and vertical field of view to make it wide or narrow, as if you were making a laser, and so on. One nice trick you can do with a volumetric light is to apply a texture to it. Right-click on the light, set Light Gobo Texture, and scroll down until you see a texture that looks like this. The volumetric light will then go through the brighter parts of the texture, which looks perfect for creating sun rays. Increase the horizontal and vertical field of view to get something like this. Looks amazing, wouldn't you agree? The last thing we have to go over is luckily the easiest one. We use those three options to change the color of our light. And that's basically it guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did, and stay tuned for more. Oh yeah, before I forget, check out this video if you want to see how to make a light if its source is something as chaotic as fire. You will need to make the light intensity follow the chaotic strength output to make the ambient as realistic as possible. I would also like to mention that our patrons have access to the more advanced tutorials where we actually make short action scenes from scratch. If you wish to learn how to build this scene, combine default animations with the rather cheap motion capturing solutions and make a great and exciting looking scene within just a few hours, feel free to check out our Patreon page. If you didn't like our second tutorial, if you thought that it was not as bright as it should have been, see what I did there, feel free to press that thumbs down button. If you do, please let us know what part of it you didn't like. But if you actually liked what you saw, feel free to show some love to that thumbs up button. Subscribe and let us know what you might want to see next.